All right. In this video, I want to go over the, the several programs that you're going to need for CIS 195 web development. I am going on the assumption that everyone in starting this class already knows how to download and install software from the, from the web, so I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. But I do want you to at least get these software programs and open them up and test them out briefly, especially if you've never used them before, so that way you can get uh, working right away on the first assignments that will require that you use these programs. So I'm going to go and pop open my browser. Now the few things that you are going to need are going to be a web browser, an HTML editor, and an FTP client. Now for your web browser choice, um, I think web developers should have the two most common browsers, which right now are Internet Explorer and Firefox. If you uh, would like to experiment, at the time of this recording, Internet Explorer 8 is in beta, so you can head over to Microsoft's website and do a search for Internet Explorer 8, and you can download that particular browser. I've actually got it on my computer as well. I haven't played around with it too much yet, but uh, this is what IE8 looks like. It's very familiar to IE7, and in fact, if you get IE8 and it's going a little buggy for you, it does have an IE7 emulation mode, so you could give that a try. So Internet Explorer 8 would be a good one to get. My primary browser, though, is, is Firefox. That's what I'm using, right? And that's what I have here. Um, so Firefox 2 is currently available. Now, I use a portable version of Firefox 2, which allows me to easily install it over to my USB drive so I can take it around to different computers. But uh, Firefox is a great one. If you're also into betas, there is a Firefox 3 in a portable that you could get and you could check out Firefox 3 features without messing up a Firefox 2 installation. So regardless of the browser you get, whether it's IE or Firefox, there's a couple things you'll need to be able to do here. Specifically, open up files that are saved locally and refresh. And both of these browsers, whether it's Firefox or Internet Explorer, you can press Control O to bring up an open file dialog box where you can go to your desktop or your My Documents and things like that and you can open up a web page that you just created. So that's how you do it in Firefox. Just Control O or of course you can go to File, Open File. Notice Control O is right there as well. In Internet Explorer, it's the same thing. In IE7 and IE8, it's not defaulting to the menu bar showing up, but in Internet Explorer, Control O brings up the open dialog box where I can then browse for a particular web page file that I want to display. And of course, for either of these programs, you can refresh. In IE8 or 7, there's a little refresh button right there. Notice F5 is the keyboard shortcut for that. In Firefox, you can refresh. There's I've got a little reload button over here. Of course, my theme may be different than yours, but there's a reload button. and. Um, F5 also works in Firefox. So regardless of the browser you use the most, those features are the same. Now here's something that you may have not used before. An HTML editor. Now if you are a Dreamweaver user, fantastic, you can still be a Dreamweaver. But for our Web Development 1 class, you are going to have to learn the markup language, which means you're going to want to be using CodeView constantly in Dreamweaver. So, in order to help encourage you to do that, I'm going to suggest getting a program that only offers a code view. What I'm going to use uh, for my stuff for our class is Notepad++, which is a it's a beefed up text editor, but it's an it's an it's a code editor, and it can do a number of different things, but it can certainly do web pages quite well, web pages, CSS, PHP, and, and those kinds of things. It's a free program, and there's also a portable version. So I've got the portable version, but you can find Notepad++ on the web, and you can go to its download option, and you can download Notepad++. It'll install pretty quick because it's a small program. Now, once you get that installed, Notepad++ is a basic editor, and uh, I can do many things with it, but I can open up blank files, I can open up existing files, and I can file, save as, I can save files as HTML files or CSS files and things like that. So once I've got it open, I can certainly type in what I need. File, save as. and I can save that file. 
Based on the extension you give it, it'll know what format you're using so it'll give you appropriate color coding. I like the color coding aspect of it and it does have line numbering which will make things a little bit easier for us. And as you're working with multiple files, you have a nice tabbed interface to work with those files and you can save all files at once and so forth. So it's a quick convenient, easy program to use. There's a lot of features on here, but we don't need a lot of features for our class. There's also a very good find and replace option, and it's also easy to uh, zoom in on your page, so you can make errors a lot easier to find, and you can zoom out and things like that. So it's a great little program, and it's free and easy to use. So Notepad++ is what I'm going to use to make web pages, and I'm going to encourage you to do the same. And the other thing you're going to need is um, FileZilla, which is an FTP client. Now, there's lots of FTP clients out there, but FileZilla's been around for a while. It's got a good reputation, and it's free. So I'm a big fan of that one. And once again, I use a portable version of FileZilla. So, of course, you can download the FileZilla client, and this program is what you're going to use to interact with your web server. So this is FileZilla right here after I've started it up. Now, you will need to put in your information. Now, I'm going to have to provide you the host, the username, and the password for your web server account. And I'll do that through your school email address. But this is the way it would work. You can type in the host address, your username and password, right up here in the Quick Connect. But that means you'd have to type it in every time you're going to connect. And you're going to be connecting to your web server frequently. So what I suge suggest you do is click on File and then Site Manager once you get into FileZilla. Now when you get to Site Manager, you'll be able to record the login information for your web server. I'm going to go ahead and try this. I'm going to click on the New Site option. And I'm going to type in CIS195 Server. There we go. And the host I will provide for you. Everybody's going to have their unique host, but I'll go ahead and give you an example using my own host. My host is ralph.coc-webdev.com. Server type FTP is fine. For logon type, choose normal. The username I'll provide to you as well. And the password I'll provide to you. So you're going to put in your host address, normal logon, username, and password. Okay. Then I'm going to choose Save and Exit. Now once you've done that in FileZilla, you'll be able to go to this little button right here to the drop down, and you'll be able to find your previous login. So then every time you need to log into your server, you just click on that. It'll do all of its magic and now you're logged into your account. Now, of course, when you publish to your account, you need to publish to your domain folder. So once you log in, you will need to double click on your domain folder. There's mine, ralph.cc-webdev. So when you publish, you always want to make sure that your domain folder is visible in the remote site area. And then publishing, of course, you've seen those other, you'll see some other tutorial videos I've got with that. Publishing is simply taking a file from the left side, the local side, and dragging it over to the server side. And if the file already exists, you may be prompted to override it if it's brand new. It sticks right in. So that page was new, but I know I published this one before. So if I drag this one over, if I publish this one, yes, it already exists. Would I like to overwrite it? Yes, I will. Okay. So log in to your web server using the FTP client called FileZilla, and then go to your remote domain, your domain space, so that you can publish your web pages and your images and everything necessary to make your website um, function for the people that want to visit it.